In the previous lecture, we discussed the time-dependent Schrodinger equation. Now, let's actually take this equation, let's solve this equation, and try to obtain the time-independent Schrodinger equation. So in this lecture, our goal will be to obtain the time-independent Schrodinger equation from the more general time-dependent Schrodinger equation given by equation A. So, this is the one-dimensional time-dependent Schrodinger equation. One-dimensional simply means our object on the atomic or subatomic level is basically moving along one dimension, let's suppose along the x-axis. So, notice in this equation we have the left and the right side. So, the left side is equal to the right side. On the left side, we have the partial derivative of the wave function with respect to time when x is held constant and the right side of our, of our equation has the second partial derivative of the wave function with respect to the position along the x-axis when time is held constant. And we also have this single wave function term which is basically a function with respect to x and with respect to time. Now, let's begin with step one. So the goal is to basically somehow take this equation, try to solve it, and obtain the time independent Schrodinger equation. So basically, we have to use some type of trick. So let's begin with step one. So sometimes in mathematics, if we have a function that is a function of two variables, we can take that function and express it as a product of two different functions that themselves are functions of a single variable. Now, what exactly do we mean by that? So, hypothetically speaking, let's suppose our function is given by f and that function is a function of two variables x and y. So, f x comma y. Now, what we mean by this statement is the following. Sometimes in mathematics, we can take this function and we can represent it in terms of the product of two different functions, g and h, for example, where g is a function of variable x and h is a function of variable y. So sometimes this is true. Now, in quantum mechanics, this is also sometimes true. So, let's examine our wave function. The wave function is, in fact, an equation. It's a function that is a function of two different variables. In this case, our y is replaced with the time. So, we see that our psi, capital psi, is with respect to x and time. So that means sometimes it must be true that this is equal to the product of two different functions where this is lowercase psi and lowercase psi is a function of simply x and f is a function of simply t. So f is independent of x and lowercase psi is independent of t. So let's call this equation b. So we have uppercase psi x comma t is equal to lowercase psi of x multiplied by f of t. So, now let's take equation A and let us now substitute equation B into equation A. So, if lowercase psi is equal to x comma t, so that means we can replace this, we can replace this, and we can replace this with the product of these two independent functions. So, that's exactly what we get in the following step, in step two. So, by taking equation B and plugging into equation A, we get the following equation. So, the left side becomes as follows, and the right side becomes as follows. Now, let's move on to step three. So, now we take the following equation, and we divide both sides by lowercase psi with respect to x multiplied by f 
with respect to t. So the purpose of that is because we want to basically separate our variables. We want to take one variable and place it on the left side and the second variable and place it on the right side. So that will become important as we'll see in just a moment. So we divide the left side by this term and the right side by this term and we get the following result. So we have i multiplied by h bar multiplied by 1 divided by f of t multiplied by the partial derivative of our f with respect to time. And this is equal to, notice that this quantity will cancel because when we divide this side by this quantity, this will cancel entirely and we'll simply left with u with respect to x where u is simply the potential energy of our particle and it depends on the position x with respect to the one-dimensional axis, the x-axis. And we subtract this. So notice the f of t term will cancel because this partial derivative does not depend on t, it only depends on x. So this term will have well, we have h bar squared multiplied by k squared divided by 2m multiplied by 1 divided by our lowercase side time uh, of x multiplied by the second partial derivative of our lowercase side with respect to x. So, once again, in mathematics, this procedure is known as the separation of variables. We basically want to separate the variables. One appears on the left side, the second one appears on the uh, right side. So in this equation, we see the t term appears only on the left side and the x term only appears on the right side. So. Once again, notice that the left side is strictly in terms of time as well as other constants, while the right side is strictly in terms of position and once again in terms of other constants. Now, why exactly is that important? Well, notice that the left side is equal to the right side. Now, let's look at the right side. The right side only really depends on the position, the position given by x. Now, when x changes, that means the right side also changes because the right side depends on x. But when x changes, that doesn't really mean that the left side will change because the left side does not actually depend on x. And likewise, if the time changes, the left side will change, but the right side will not necessarily change. However, according to this equation, we know that the left side must equal to the right side. And the only time that this is actually true is when the left side is equal to the right side is equal to some constant. So, this basically implies that both sides must be equal to some constant. Let's call this constant E. And we'll see why that's important in just a moment. We could have called this constant some other constant. For example, A, B, C. So, we basically take the left side of the equation and we set it equal to our constant E. We take the right side of our equation and we set it equal to our constant E. So this is equal to this side. So let's call this entire equation equation C. So let's take equation C and now multiply both sides of our equation by lowercase psi with respect to x. So our wave function, that only depends on x. So if we multiply the left side, we get this quantity. If we multiply the right side, we get this quantity. And notice, this is exactly the one-dimensional, non-relativistic time independent Schrodinger equation. So we see that we can readily obtain the time independent Schrodinger equation from the more general time dependent Schrodinger equation. So we were able to solve this equation and we obtained the time independent Schrodinger equation.